joint briefing with Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese. President Joe Biden condemned Hamas' action as despicable and cowardly. He emphasized Hamas' use of Palestinian civilians as shield and reaffirmed that United States solidarity with Israel, supporting Israel's right to protect its citizens. Joe Biden expressed gratitude for Israeli and Palestinian cooperation in delivering humanitarian aid to Gaza and highlighted ongoing efforts. Now take a look at our report. In a joint briefing with Australian Prime Minister on October 26th, US President Joe Biden addressed the recent military response by Israel to the October 7 terror attack. President Joe Biden unequivocally condemned the action of the terrorist group Hamas, describing them as despicable and cowardly. He stressed that Hamas is using Palestinian civilians as shields. Biden reaffirmed the United States' solidarity with Israel, asserting Israel's right and responsibility to protect its citizens in the face of this threat. Joe Biden also expressed gratitude to both Israeli and Palestinians for their cooperation in ensuring the delivery of essential humanitarian aid to innocent people in Gaza. He underlined the ongoing efforts in collaboration with regional partners to secure the release of hostages held by Hamas in the Gaza Strip, including American citizens and foreign nationals. Israel has the right, and I would add, responsibility to respond to the slaughter of their people. And we will ensure Israel has what it needs to defend itself against these terrorists. Hamas is hiding behind Palestinian civilians and is despicable and not surprisingly cowardly as well. Israel has the right, and I would add, responsibility to respond to the slaughter of their people. And we will ensure Israel has what it needs to defend itself against these terrorists. That's a guarantee. We also have to remember that Hamas does not represent, let me say it again, Hamas does not represent the vast majority of the Palestinian people on the Gaza Strip or anywhere else. Hamas is hiding behind Palestinian civilians and is despicable and not surprisingly cowardly as well. This also puts an added burden on Israel while they go after Hamas. But uh, that does not lessen the need for to operate in a line with the laws of war, for Israel has to do everything in its power, Israel has to do everything in its power, as difficult it is to protect innocent civilians. That's difficult. I want to thank the, Israeli, uh, the Israelis and the Palestinian, excuse me, and President Sisi of Egypt for working with the United States to make sure that food, water, and medical supplies are getting through to innocent people in Gaza. The flow needs to increase. And we're working very hard with our partners to make that happen. We're also working around the clock together with our partners in the, uh, in the region to secure the release of hostages, and including American citizens behind, uh, left behind and held by Hamas, and the safe passage of foreign nationals out of Gaza, not just Americans, but Australians and a whole range of people who are trapped in Gaza. I also want to take a moment to look ahead toward the future that we seek. Israelis and Palestinians equally deserve to live side by side in safety, dignity, and peace. There's no going back to the status quo as it stood on October the 6th. That means ensuring Hamas can no longer terrorize Israel and use Palestinian civilians as human shields. It also means that when this crisis is over, there has to be a vision of what comes next. And in our view, it has to be a two-state solution. It means a concentrated effort for all the parties, Israelis, Palestinians, regional partners, global leaders, to put us on a path toward peace. In the past few weeks, I've spoken to leaders throughout the region, including King Abdullah of Jordan, President Sisi of Egypt, President Abbas of the Palestinian Authority, and just yesterday with the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia about making sure there's real hope in the region for a better future. About the need, and I mean this sincerely, about the need to work toward a greater integration for Israel, while insisting that the aspirations of the Palestinian people will be part, will be part of that future as well.